makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. your heart be not troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, I have been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the work. Since I lay my burdens down, glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down, friends don't treat me like they used to, since I lay my burdens down, friends don't treat me like they used to, since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory. burning down glory glory hallelujah since I lay my burdens down shall not all sleep, but we 
shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality. But when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O victory, where is your, your, your grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord.
so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven like with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. you be watchful in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand I have not I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day and not to me only but also to all who have loved his appearing. be seated. Friends and family, let's celebrate Reginald's life and, and, and for, for what he has meant to you as, you as your family and friends. Amen. Coming up after me will be a selection by Nikibi, Brother Nikibius Johnson, the scripture reading, the Old Testament by Courtland Lee, the New Testament by Cameron Bly, and a prayer of comfort by Minister Priscilla McWilliams. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Our God is worthy to be praised. The life celebration of Reginald Tyrone Summage Jr. Sunrise, January 28, 2022. Sunset, March 18, 2022. Saturday, March 26, 2022 at 1 o'clock p.m. True Divine Baptist Church, 4601 Troy Highway, 
Montgomery, Alabama, 36116. Pastor Stephen D. Huntley, Minister Priscilla McWilliams, yours truly, Mistress of Order. The order of service will go as printed. There will be, we will have a selection by Makedia Johnson. Scriptures, Old Testament, Portland Lee. New Testament, Cameron Bly. Prayer of Comfort, Minister Priscilla McWilliams. Words of Expression, Family, Friends, and Coaches. And the family sincerely ask you to limit your expressions to two minutes each, please. We will read the obituary silently. Then we will have a selection by Makedia Johnson, eulogy by Pastor Stephen D. Huntley, acknowledgments by Ms. Shakisha Johnson. I just want to make it to heaven mm -hmm. I just want to make it in hey. And when this life is over I want to be free from sin I just want my name written Written in the Lamb's book of life And when this life is over I want eternal life To hear him say
Old Testament scripture will be coming from Ecclesiastes 3, uh, verses 1 through 4. For everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. send my condolences. Grief is one of those things that you don't move on from, but you move forward through. And my prayer is that God sends you a peace that will surpass all understanding. In John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, it reads, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe? silence your phones. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, the God of love, God of mercy, I come in the matchless name of your son, Jesus. I come lifting up this family, my family, whether connected by blood or by strands of love and fellowship. I lift us up to you to embrace us all today. Our hearts are heavy and filled with anguish and overflowing with grief. Father, take our consuming grief and the overwhelming anger and pain and Father, replace it with your mercy, your comfort and your love. Lift bow down heads as you are the lifter up of our heads. Hold us close, Father, and tend to our aching hearts throughout the coming days. Lead us through these dark times into your loving arms and into your light. Comfort us, Father, as only you can. Lord, you said in your word, that those who mourn shall be comforted. So I ask you right now, Father, to comfort. Heal all of our hearts. Every broken heart in every hurt place, Lord God. And then bind up every wound. Give us, Father, your peace that surpasses all understanding. In the powerful, in the mighty, in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, in Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen. So now we have words of expression, and please limit those to two minutes. Thank you. chance to meet Reginald. And I only had a chance to meet him, but to learn he's from my hometown, dad, mom, and his kin to my wife. But it's really, really touch home. But the one thing I can say to this family, you can see by these students and these student athletes, Reginald was loved. Well loved. The Bible said, train them up in the way they should go. When, he, when he's older, he won't depart. Reginald had the upbringing, the stock, the pedigree. And I always tell you, he had that smile. 
That smile I wanted to wipe, it slept off his face when I first got there. I told the guys about parking. He just smiled. I said, I'm going to wipe that smile off your face. And he told me, I'm still going to smile. You rub me to my tongue. I want to leave you with this. Reginald was a champion. You always be sincere what you pray for. Because God will give it to you what you ask. So I wanted to know the heart of Reginald. He's a champion. Reminds me of David. Character, heart, attitude, mentality, personality, integrity, overcomer, and will never give up. So family, I want you to know Reginald believed in the principle that I teach these young men. We educate, we dominate, and we graduate. We make A's and B's, we earn C's and D's. We make A's and B's in the classroom. We win championships on the field. We get degrees in education. God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Coach Lee Carter, our Coach Reggie at Jeff Davis High School. And uh, early this week, I spoke to Senior, and he asked me what I speak, and I told him I'd be glad to. And I thought about what I could say. And I, then it came to me all the times that we would sit in the gym or we would stand in the gym lobby. It'd be me, Coach Chavez, Coach Edwards, Coach Eubanks, Coach Adams, and Reggie would always come along. And the first thing he would say is, hey, coach, keep it real with me. Or coach, be real about this. And he asks us a question. And he never wanted a watered-down answer, but he always wanted the truth. And the truth is, Reggie was a brilliant young man on and off the field. In three years of me coaching him, I never once had a discipline problem out of him. And that just goes to show the family that he came from. Uh, he was loved by all. He was well-respected. He was everything that you wanted in a football player. He was long, athletic, had great hands, great speed, but most importantly, Reggie was disciplined. Reggie was gonna be where he was supposed to be all the time. I never had to worry about was Reggie going to do what we asked him to do, because he always did it. And we live in a perfect world, and I'm far from perfect. I made a lot of mistakes, and a lot of those mistakes Senior would call him out on Friday night, and he let me know I was making a mistake. And Reggie was coming to me after, after we win or loss, hey, coach, we just got to get better. So to all of you all out there, the Bible says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So to the family, I love you all. I'm only a call away. Uh, to Reggie, rest well, young king. Love you. Summers and family, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Really appreciate it. My name is Michael Wilson. I coach junior in Little League football. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming, your presence here today. We gather here today to recognize this painful reality, to remember Reginald Summers and what we called him junior, joyful spirit to reaffirm our belief and to release junior spirit as we seek solace within our community. Uh, uh, I'm going to shorten it because we only have a couple of minutes, but uh, Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And when I think about Junior and how smart of a kid he was on the field, off the field, he was just a leader. Came from a good family, brothers, loved him to death, and we loved his brothers to death. 
And I'm going to end with a quick prayer that reminds me of Junior Summers. It's the prayer of the Archangel, St. Michael. Be our protect, I'm sorry, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the Heaven, heavenly hosts, by the power of, of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the rule of our souls. Amen. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Coach Adams. Uh, I am also uh, Reggie's teacher and one of his football coaches. Um, as the week went on, you know, it was it was it was really tough. Um, and of course, social media brings back a bring back a whole lot of memories. And so, a couple things that came across my mind. And you heard Coach Carter said that he was fast and he had all of the attributes that you want out of an athlete. Well, I remember a slightly different story about Reggie. Reggie came into Jeff Davis as about a 5'8 little shrimp, all right? Reggie just worked. So as the week go on, I kept seeing footage and film and how Reggie had, had grown over the course of the time. And one word came to my mind, perseverance. Reggie never took no for an answer. He came in, he was so small. What I need to do, coach, you need to get faster. Reggie was slow as molasses. Then guess what Reggie did? He went and ran track. He came back out there the next year. He had grown up and jumped up to about six foot, and he could run. He was already smart. So it's like, man, this, this kid got a chance. So even through all of that, through all of his ups and downs, and, and we didn't have the best seasons, but he just kept fighting and kept working. And I can remember the last play of Reggie's high school career. It was a special teams play. We were down by like 14, maybe 21 points. The ball was kicked off to Reggie, and instead of just shutting it down like everybody else did, Reggie tried to make something happen. He tore his ACL up. You know what Reggie did after that? He persevered. He kept working. And I said, son, just keep working. You get a chance, and whoever gets you is going to get a special kid. Not only on the football field, but on and off the football field. To this day, guys, if Reggie can leave anything with you, persevere. Through the good times, through the bad times, persevere. Family, I know this hurt. Persevere. Fe people, persevere. We're losing too many. I love you, Reggie. Or it's not going to be the same without you, brother. Slater. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, recruiting Reggie to Tuskegee University. Uh, he uh, came in uh, as a freshman. And, well, he, we recruited him during the uh, pandemic time, so that first year we weren't able to play. And then he came back. And we were in spring training and had one play, and then he hurt his knee. But uh, once he was able to come back, he still didn't miss a practice or anything like that. He was at everything. And then that year we played, he was at every game, every practice, everything. And uh, I know he's going to have a good year this year. Uh, I guess the thing that sticks out the most to me about Reggie is uh, he went to church with me a few times. I know the Lord's on his side. When I heard what happened, I said, yeah, that sounds about right. He got his teammates back. Just want to say I love him. And, uh, what a great young man. Grades, work ethic. He had, he got everything. Just, uh, I just thank the Lord that I had the opportunity to know him.
Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Kwesi Daniels. I'm the Department Head of Architecture and Construction Science Management at Tuskegee. And Reggie was one of our students. As you've heard from the athletic department, honored to be able to tell you from the, athletic, the academic department, that brother was a scholar athlete. We don't see a lot of scholar athletes. And it's amazing what you can learn from somebody in a virtual environment. We didn't get a chance to see all of our students like we normally do. But as I think about how I got a chance to get to know Mr. Summage, it was over a career fair. I couldn't believe this man was a sophomore. He showed up every single day when other students weren't showing up. Normally, I got to fight students. I'm calling them up on the phone. Hey, you know, we got jobs here. We got folks trying to hire you. Mr. Summage was there when we started at 8 o'clock. And at 2 o'clock when the firms was going, he was like, anybody else? I say all of that because when I found out who it was that passed, to me, I was like, why? Why do we lose those examples who are, are the ones that we really, we, we wish everybody was? And I think it's because he is that example. We get to celebrate his memory and we get to embed in the minds of his teammates and his classmates that this is what you strive for. When it's your time, we look back at what you've done and it's your evidence, it's your work that everybody speaks for versus the words you had to say. Brother Summage, you live the life of a warrior. We, we happy that you shared your time with us. Thank you, brother. The family appreciates all of your words comfort, your kind words, your words of strength. We ask, we ask you now to take a few minutes and read the obituary silently, after which we will have a selection by Makiba Johnson, and then our eulogy by Pastor Huntley, and the acknowledgments by Miss Johnson. some hills to climb I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights but when I All of my 
good day. I'll weigh my bad days. I, I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I ask this question, Lord. Why? Why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. All of my weary eyes, they can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I, I, I won't complain. God has been good to me. He been good to me. More than this whole world or you can ever be. He's been so good to, to me. And he dried my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. So I would just say thank you, Lord. I've been talked about, but thank you, Lord. I've been misunderstood, but thank you, Lord. I've been talked about, but thank you, Lord. But I'm going home, now thank you, Lord. Hey, 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 I won't complain. Thank you. Father, thank you for this privilege that I have to stand in your place as an eternal voice to the hearer. Thank you that I have the privilege of speaking on behalf of Ridge today. I pray, Father, that you will provide for this family peace that surpasses all human comprehension. Then give us strength to move from this place of celebration to making his name famous. Thank you, Father, for helping us day by day to get up and make progress from this place. Thank you for doing that in advance. Now, Father, I pray that you would speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind, and with clarity, Father, may your people hear your voice from behind the voice of the man of God. 
Every need in the room be met. Every need on social media be met. To walk away from religious life celebration knowing that he hath made impact on our lives. We get the opportunity to serve humanity on his part for the rest of our lives. We glorify you and thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, can we put our hands together again for Mr. Reginald Tyrone Summits Jr. Come on, let's put our hands together and bless God for this outstanding young man. 20 years of life, but outstanding young man. Come on, let's celebrate God for his life. Come on, let's celebrate God for his life. You're here to celebrate his life. Come on, put your hands together and let's celebrate his life. Thank God that we get an opportunity to celebrate his life. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to this family. I'm, I pray that we as a church have served you all well during this time of Reg's passing, going home to be with the Lord. You know, I'm, I'm in a tough position today. And in situations like Reg's passing, very, very tough for a lot of pastors to stand and speak on behalf of God to a family when it's hard to understand. It's very, very difficult to put all the pieces together. You can see so much promise out of his life, hope and aspiration connectivity to powerful people that were empowering his life, impacting his life, then attending a prominent, outstanding university, playing the game of football, honing his skills, getting ready for life. Then one day each of us get a call. So my responsibility in celebrating Reggie's life is tough but easy. First thing I'll, I'll say is that you probably heard this saying a thousand times since you got the call or the text or whatever form of communication you found out about Reggie's passing that it was his time. And the answer to that is, it wasn't his time. That his life was taken. He was supposed to be here on the planet just like you and I are today. That's the answer to that. It wasn't anything that had to do with God. Or God took him. And that'll help some of you in the family and friends to get a level of peace. His passing is the result of fallen humanity. We've fallen. We've fallen a long way down from God's very, very best for our lives. But you and I, you and I have an opportunity to curve this type of fallen situation that we find ourselves living in each and every day. You and I have an opportunity to change this course of life for a lot of our young people. We got, we got an opportunity to do so. So today, I want to challenge you to join in to the opportunity that we have to make sure that Reg didn't just live and die, but that each of us that goes on and live 
80 years and 75 years and perhaps by the time you're old enough, most of us will probably live to be 100. But the question is, what will you do with all those days? Change the troubled times that we live in today to positive times for our young people now and young people in the future. You know, in the heart of man, when these situations come up like this, it's always, I want to I wanna retaliate. I spoke to Brandon early in the week and said to Brandon, I know it's in your heart. It's a valid feeling. It's in the heart of a lot of people in this room, a lot of people watching online, but it's not the answer. Not the answer. We don't understand it all. We won't understand it all right now. But if we keep going home, visiting with our friends, keep seeking God through prayer, the old church said we'll understand it better by and by. You don't have to understand everything right now. You just keep getting up, going to bed, keep getting up, going to bed. Days will come, months will come, years will come. We'll understand. We'll be able to put some things into place that will help us understand it better. I want you to understand your life is valuable. Brandon, your life is valuable. You play a key role in your brother's future, his name going into the future. And I want to make sure that you understand that and all these other young men and young ladies that are in this room that I get the opportunity to speak to. So then, preacher, what is the answer? Let's take a look at a scripture over in Genesis chapter number 4, verse 1 through verse number 10. Today I want to talk about me and my brother. Me and my brother. Say that with me, me and my brother. There's a story that I'm sure that most of us who have been in church have heard about, and if you haven't been in church that many times, I'm sure that as you travel along life, you've heard some uh, uh, framework around this biblical story, but it's a story of the first family of Adam and Eve having at that time in their life of this particular text two sons, Cain and Abel. And so I want to just read the story for the sake of the hearer so that you might be able to grasp the whole concept of why pastor is ministering on this particular text. In verse 1 it says, And Adam knew his wife Eve, she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. She again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. He was a, a shepherd. But his oldest brother, Cain, uh, was a tiller of the ground. He was uh, a farmer, one that worked in the agrarian society. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very upset, angry. The Bible uses the word rough, and his countenance failed. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou upset and angry, and why can I see it on your face? Verse 7 says, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto you shall be sin's desire, and sin will rule over you. Verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his own brother that Cain rose up 
against his own brother Abel and he slew him. First family, first murder of biblical text. And the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? And Abel and Cain answered and said, I don't even know. Am I my brother's keeper? Let's not let that hang in the air anymore. The absolute answer to that is yes, you are your brother's keeper. It's that kind of mindset that causes us to be in where we are now. That we live in a culture and a time where we're not concerned about others, about our brothers and blood of my blood, bone of my bone. We're no longer concerned about that, but only concerned for ourselves. And God said to him in verse 10, what have you done? What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying unto me from the ground. Me and my brother. In order to understand where we are as human beings, we have to go back to the first man, Adam. First man, Adam, uh, is spoken of in chapter number one, two, and three of Genesis. Adam had the perfect environment for humankind to exist in, and that was the Garden of Eden. It was in the Garden of Eden that Adam and Eve made a decision, a decision to go totally against God's very, very best for their lives. And that was to uh, abstain, to move away from the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But they made a decision to embark upon, to engage in through the craftiness of Satan, the fallen angel, and, 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 and to going away from God's very, very best. And because of that, in chapter number three, God came looking for Adam and asked Adam, Adam, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? And Adam said, it's that woman you gave me. She gave to me and I ate it for supper. And God proceeds in chapter number three, to say to Adam and Eve that these are the penalties for your sin that you've committed in the garden. But not only will you have a penalty upon you, but now your sin nature will be passed on to all humankind. It was in that moment that God said that life on the planet will get worse and worse and worse. Do you know the first generation of humankind lived to be almost a thousand years? And here we are, here we are on the planet now because of our fallen estate into sin. Here you are and I are struggling to get to 70. Barely trying to make it there. And sin is what's killing us day by day, moment by moment. Sin. Separation from God is what brings us to this moment of celebrating Red's life. I want you to, I want you to hear a couple of things about the sin nature. Uh, that you and I, David qualified this. David said that you and I are, are were born in sin. And then community. We were born in sin by just being born. Just giving a body qualifies us to have the sin nature. And then community, I love this about David. He said, not only was I born in sin, but community shaped me in iniquity. Well, what is the difference between sin and iniquity? Sin is, is things that you do on your own. Iniquity is stuff that we pass on from one person to another person to another person to another person to another person. I did it. I teach another person to do it, and they teach another person to do it, and that's what you call iniquity. And David qualified it. 
David said, I was born with sin nature, and then the, the culture around me taught me how to become ratchet. I, can't, I said something just in case you all didn't know it. I know I caught you off guard, but I did say ratchet. And, 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 and the thing about sin is it makes us compare ourselves among ourselves. Notice in the text here that Cain was upset because he didn't put in the grind that was necessary for his offering to be accepted. What, ha what happened as a result? He began to compare himself with his brother Abel. By virtue of such, the sin nature that was already in him caused him to become so overwhelmed with anger that he took his own brother's life. The sin nature is a bad deal. The sin nature will cause us to do things that, that God never ever desired for us to do on the planet. The sin nature is what, what causes us to say to ourselves, I had a whole lot of fun doing it. I know it was wrong, but I had a whole lot of fun doing it. And the whole while we're doing it, we don't realize that we are only going down after down after down after down. The sin nature. The second thing that I'll say to you today that not only should we be aware of the sin nature on the inside of us, but we have a responsibility for others. That's the most important part that I believe I'll say today is that you have a responsibility for others. I don't know if you've ever heard that before in your entire life, but you and I have a responsibility for other people, not just people we know, but for all the human race that God gave Adam and, and Eve an opportunity to multiply and replenish the earth and then subdue and have dominion and have power to have authority. And then he turned around after the great flood and gave the, the, the same power and authority away to Noah and said, Noah, you're going to replenish, you're going to multiply, and you're going to have dominion, you're going to have authority, and you have to have responsibility for one another. That's the second thing that I'll share with you today is that level of responsibility for other people that God has given to us. What is that one responsibility, preacher? It is to love one another. You don't have to like me, but please do love me. You and I, in our personalities, we may bump up against each other. That's okay. But please, in your heart, please, in your heart, just love me for me. If you have enough respect for me, you love me, right? You don't have to like everything about me. But please, just love me for who I am. Love me for my personality. Love me for my ability to think. Love me for my responsibility on my job. Love me for who I am. And God said this. This is what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, if you really want to know uh, uh, how the world looks at you and how the world will examine you and say that you truly represent me, here is how they will know it, that you love ye one another. It is the anchor of humanity. It is the anchor of humanity. It's to love people. To love people. Not just people in your circle, but love people. And I believe that if we grab hold of the love of God and we grab hold of the love responsibility that comes along with loving humanity, we are better off in our society. Can I get three amens? The second thing is we have a responsibility, listen carefully, to improve humanity. To improve humanity. What's your part in making humans better? What's your part in making sure that our planet lasts beyond your generation? Making sure that the people that you've been educated with and you've studied together with, that they too can earn a degree and they too can be gainfully employed. What's your responsibility? You and I have a responsibility to, to each other by making sure that we be our best selves. Not mediocre, not average. If you're mediocre and you're average, you're not putting in the grind that's necessary to be the best you. It's almost like a slap in the face of God that you bring me to okra to the table and, and not your very, very best self because when we bring our very, very best self, now we can simply say, I'm having an effect on humanity all around me. You know, the people that perform the best 
are coached by the very, very best people. Let me say that again. The people that perform the best are coached by the very, very best coaches because they ask for more than just average. And for all of you that are here and viewing online, I'm asking, I'm asking, Pastor Huntley is asking in your generation for you to give us more. Give us more than what you're giving. Don't show up with mediocre. Show up every day that I'm going to be my very, very best self. And by virtue of that, I hope and I pray that it'll rub off on somebody else. And when it starts to be infectious around us, then all of us are living at a high and an exceptional level. And then are we pleasing God in every sphere of our lives. Can I get three amens in the house? You know, we speak in respect to Reg's life and gun violence. That's the huge issue in the African American community that we don't want to talk about. We talk about everything, but we don't want to talk about black men murdering black men. We talk about everything. It's all over TV. You, every subject matter is all over the TV. It's blasted everywhere. But in our community, we don't want to talk about the reality of what happened to Ridge. We skip over it. We dance around the subject matter. Instead of saying, it's time for us in this generation to do something about it. That you and I have a responsibility we have a responsibility to make sure that, that the Reds of the future can live their full lives. We have a responsibility for this, a major responsibility. And so now is the time. Now is the time. It is no longer for us to sit around and talk about it in private spaces. It's time for us to get real about it and be able to say, we're sick and tired of use, losing bright young men to gun violence. Let me, let me help you. I know sometimes it's when you're young, you don't know where to start. Because I've been young before, so I can, I, I can tell you I know where to start. I know where to start. I, I know where to, where to jump you off. I, need, I can jump you off right there where you are. Most of you in this room are, are, are at some level of, of, of gaining and earning your, your education. So, so let, me, let me help you out a little bit. So, so uh, it, where gun violence is concerned, right there uh, while you're earning your degree, you can, you can help out. There's, a, there's a, 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 a huge thing that is happening around the country that most of you probably never heard of, but it's called smart gun technology. Smart gun technology is, is, is uh, on, on, on its basic format is that you, 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 only we you can only buy a weapon that can be fired by its, its owner's biometrics. In other words, if, if you don't own the gun and it's not, it's not you know, sort of like your smartphone, if, you, know, you, you, you know, you put your face in there and, it, and then it lights up and say, oh, it's, it's Stephen, right? So smart guns are, are, are very, very similar to that. Very, very similar to that. And, and, and around the country, believe it or not, there are people that are advocating that these guns don't even be on the market. Don't even, don't even put them on the market. And, and some are, are, are for, for, for reasons that we can't explain, and, and then some are for reasons that, 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 that they think that, you know, we're trying to take away uh, uh, gun rights from everybody. No, it's, 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 it's saying to ourselves as African-American young people that we have a community issue that must be addressed. And this community issue that needs to be addressed can only start with you. Can only start in your generation. So how can I get involved, preacher, for those that, that are studying to be engineers? Find a way to create a, another type of gun. It don't have to be a smart gun, but another type of gun. For, for those that are in science, get engaged in science. And those that are in criminal justice, you can get engaged. Those that are going to law school, you can get engaged. Those that are in technology, you can get engaged. Those that are in political science while you're running for office, you can get engaged. Because what we are experiencing now, we are sick and tired of it, and it is time for it to change. And that's the reality. If all of you that are in this place that I get an opportunity to challenge today do nothing with what you're hearing now, your uncle who's 60-something is not going to do it. And your granddad that's 75 is not going to do it. 
And that 50 year old who's thinking about retirement is not willing to think any further than where they are. It's up to all these bright young minds that are in this room, that are watching over the internet. It's up to you. Don't just let Reg pass away at 20 years of age and you not respond in a positive way and you not respond with, with your brightness and your future and make a commitment that, that I will not allow him to die in vain but I'm going to get engaged I'm going to engage myself in a positive way with this thing that is happening to our generation now will not be happening 20 years from now and 25 years from now in order to overcome the sin nature, it requires that you have an experience with the second Adam. First man, Adam, failed. Failed royally. And God, in his, in his majestic plan, in his mighty wisdom, before the world was founded, before the cosmos ever came into existence, God made a plan. When humankind fall away and humankind decides that that's the route they want to go, I'm going to send my son. I'm going to send my son as the second Adam so that man will not have an excuse to not live for me in a positive way. The Bible calls it redemption. That you and I get the opportunity to be redeemed. We're broken, we're sad, we're, we're, we're fallen, we're flawed, but there is a man, Jesus, that came to give us hope beyond ourselves. And I want to say to you today that you can be redeemed. Perhaps you've been living out your sin nature this whole while, but I got good gospel news for you today. Today you can live for Christ and your life will be changed forever. I want you to listen what Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says. It says, Christ Jesus hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Why did he do that? Why did Christ come to redeem us? Because we were out without hope, lost without God, lost without a future, lost without dreams being realized, lost. And then God Father thought enough about humanity to say you're worth it. Let me give you the greatest gift that I have in my son, that my son Jesus Christ will take away all of your inabilities. In exchange, he will give you ability. Isn't that good gospel news to know that God of the cosmos would think about little old me enough to say I'm going to give a replacement for your faults and failures and lacks and insufficiencies. He's going to make an exchange so that whatever blessing he put over on Abraham might come on you and I, that you and I might be empowered to live in an effective way and that you and I will answer that question that old Cain never answered. Am I my brother's keeper? And you and I can respond, I am. I care enough about humanity because God cared enough about me to send his son so that I could be redeemed from all of my insufficiencies in life. You have a great future ahead of you. You got great promise. And I want you to know today, don't allow our good friend Reg to pass away at 20 years old and you not think about him and your craft going forward in the future. I remember the first time I, I met Reg, met him down in basketball court here at the church. I go down and um, watch these young men play basketball. They, you know, for older men, y'all young men remind us of ourselves. And so I'd walk down there and watch these young men play at basketball and met Reg down there on the, on the basketball court, realizing that this young man was 
bright, intelligent, capable, great future. And to know today that I have to stand and eulogize him says to me as his pastor, I got to stand up for humanity. And I want to challenge you today. Don't walk away today and go back to your norm. If you got to organize groups and strategize, start it now. Our community is worth it. We're bright, we're brilliant, we're capable. We're more than what snippets are put on the news. And I got to care about me and I got to care about you, my brother. Y'all received it today? Well, come on, let's give Reg life one more big thank you. Come on, give him one more big thank you. Come on, give him one more big thank you. Come on, let's celebrate his life. Come on, celebrate his life like a champion he is. Come on, come on, celebrate his life like the champion he is. What a champion. What a champion, what a champion, what a champion. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everyone. For he is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Pastor Hanley, for that awesome word. Acknowledgements as follows. With sympathy, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Psalms 31, 24. Sharing in your sorrows at the loss of someone so special, ex extending deepest sympathy and love to you and your family. Mark and Debbie Dye, we are praying for you. Praying for you. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Psalms 73, 26. No one can say they know what you're going through right now. However, I hope there is comfort in knowing others sharing the same hurt. And we are about, we are about you and your family. My deepest condolence to you and your family I pray God continues to give you and your family strength that needs to carry forward with day-to-day -day livelihood. We'll always be with you forever. May God give you strength when yours is gone. May his grace and mercy carry you on. May the unending loving that he has for you Revive your heart and see you through. Love always, Howard family. As many, as many people journey through life, they leave footprints of kindness and love. Even when they're gone, their trail through left behind continue to inspire us. Praying God will comfort and care for you why you celebrate the legend that lives on with sympathy from your family in Iowa. On behalf of the Summage family, we wish to extend our heartfelt thanks and appreciation for every act, kindness, the flowers, the cards, the telegrams, phone calls, visits, texts, and prayers in our time during bereavement. Special thanks to the Tuskegee University alumni. Thank you all. May we all stand except for the family.
For as much as it had pleased Almighty God to take out of the world the soul of our deceased brother, who therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for that blessed hope when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May we pray. Father, once again, we thank you for Reg's life. Thank you for the impact he's made on each of us as individuals. We make a commitment in our hearts today to go forward each day making his name famous through our actions and deeds as we do all we can to make humanity better. So we glorify you and thank you for Reggie's life. Bless his family. Bless each one of them in special ways. Bless his parents and his siblings, aunts, uncles, all that are a part of his family. I pray, Father, that you will help them day by day, moment by moment, to go about grieving in a way that will honor his life. We thank you, Father, for blessing them and giving them courage moment by moment. And when the times are low, we thank you that they can count on leaning on you for all that they'll ever need. In Jesus' name, lift your hands for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give unto you the God kind of peace with nothing missing nothing lacking, nor anything broken. In Jesus' name, amen. my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
going up beyond love. Going up beyond love. I'm going up beyond love to be with my Lord. Oh, I'm going up beyond love. I'm going up beyond love. I'm going up beyond to be with my mm-hmm. I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond to be with my Lord Oh, I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond To be with my Lord I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond I'm going up beyond to be with my Lord. Oh, oh, I'm going up beyond. I'm going up beyond. I'm going up beyond to be with my Lord.